I'm right there running my machine. Fidel 4020, back in those days, I had a machine in front of me. I had two machines on the side of me. And all of a sudden, boom, like, like crazy loud. Like I hear the loudest boom in a shop I've ever heard. And I just hit feed hold, boom. Like I look inside my machine, everything's good. I run to the side, I hit feed hold, run to the other one, hit feed hold, look at the machines. I'm like, everything is like perfect. And through the crack between two machines, I can see like we're in like a, a rectangle bay. I'm at one end with doors behind me, right? Roll up doors. And then I look down towards the other side of the bay where there's a roll-up door and a glass door. And all of a sudden, right through this space, I see my friend Roger, like literally hopping on one foot, going left and he disappears. And I know that that's where the bathroom is. So like, I know something's going on. So I run over there. And as I run over there, run past these like hard hinge lays and, and different, you know, lays, boom, I get over there. And I see this like big old Nakamura right there. And the whole thing, like this lathe is like, is pivoted like a good, like probably like, you know, good four to five feet. The entire lathe, monster machine, like it's moved. And like one side is probably like four or five feet. And over by the controls, maybe just like a foot. So the whole thing just kind of spun in one direction a little bit. And I look at it, I'm like, Dang, like, and I'm not comprehending. You know how you see something, but you're not understanding what's going on? Um, I look at the lathe. I look to the left. I, I run over to the bathroom. My friend, Roger, is, like, over there, and he's, like, holding his leg. And I'm like, what happened? He's like, the machine just slammed into me. And I look back at the machine, and this time I'm like on the left. So I look back at the machine, and I see the back of the machine, and I can see the door, like the big roll-up door that was closed, and it's pushed in, and I see the back of a car. And I'm like, like, like I'm like, what is going on, you know? And I run out that glass door, and right when I step out, I look, and it's like a Honda, like like a hatchback, kind of like a little station wagon type. Like it's right there and its rear is in the door. And there's a guy that's like in the front. And I'm like looking at him and I'm like, wait, like instantly I realized this guy was in there arguing with Kevin the owner of the company, right? This is back in Sunnyvale, California when I was like working at Zanola Manufacturing. And like, I was, I remember being on my machines and Kevin, there was like a local guy who actually had a personal project and Kevin had actually done some machining just as a freebie, like just to help him out, right? And then, you know, some things happened and then the guy didn't like him and asked for some changes. So then Kevin actually made the changes. And then the guy came back again and wanted more adjustments. And again, Kevin is not charging him anything and the guy didn't want to pay anything. Kevin was just being cool to a guy down the street. And, and the guy literally like started like raising his voice and got upset at Kevin, right? And I remember like I walked over and as I was walking over to make sure everything was like okay the first time before this incident, like the guy kind of walks out of the back room, like we had this little kind of inspection area and like he walks out and like leaves and then Kevin's still in the room and I just walk back to my machine and that's where I was when I heard the boom, right? Now, I actually, all of a sudden, when I came out that door, that same guy is sitting there in the car, the windows are rolled up and like he looks right at me. And I look at him and I'm like, are you okay? And like, like dazed, he like kind of looks past me. Like he just kind of switches his focus and like looks past me, right? So he's in the car. He's got like, he's at the driver's seat and then he's turning to his left, right? Going out the driver's side window. I'm like a little bit behind. Like, so he looks at me then he just looks straight off into the distance like past me, I run into the shop. I yell for Kevin, who's now 
over there by Roger. I'm like, call 911. I run back outside. And as soon as I run back outside, the guy is leaning back and his head's back. His mouth is open and he's white. And I'm just like, like I run over there. I go to the back window. I, I elbow the window. These windows are tough, right? I elbow the window and like probably didn't like fully commit, but I just, I elbowed it. My, my elbow bounces off. I run right inside the door. I grab a pipe, like a piece of bar stock, round bar stock. I run back out. This is not the window right behind the guy, right? I go and I, I break the window. I open the door. I open the, the driver's side door. Boom. And, and the guy is just out. And, and like, I, I don't like in that moment, I absolutely do not know what to do. I've seen some crazy things in my life, but I did not know what to do. But I knew that we needed to do CPR. So like I grabbed him and I started bringing him out right then. Kevin came around the side. This guy, Billy, came along the side. You know, remember the, the story about the guy who crashed the machine? He runs around the other side. We actually bring the guy out super gently. We lay him down. And then Kevin starts uh, doing the CPR. And like, we're just like, he's like, he's like pumping his chest. And he's like trying to talk to him, trying to listen to him. The guy's not breathing. Now he's not just white. He's like literally like blue. Like he's just like, and, and we're just standing there. And, and man, it was so quick. It was like just like a couple minutes. All of a sudden, uh, cop car fire truck, all of these just pulling up, boom, boom, boom. We all step back and like, they just go to town, like, and they're just doing their thing. They're trying to revive this gentleman and, and like, boom, boom, boom and stuff. And they, they go into, you know, his license and different things and stuff. And like, man, it was crazy. Like the gentleman did not make it like he didn't make it. And it was like, it was like, it's like surreal, you know, you, you look back like, you know, all of a sudden he's like laying, he's laying there and, and they didn't cover him for a while. And I remember like I'm standing right inside the glass door and we're all like standing there because now you got like all these cops over there and we got the paramedics and we got all them. And they're literally like looking at this guy. I mean, they're, they're, you know, doing what they got to do, not looking at him, but they're like doing what they got to do. And we're just like, we're just looking and stuff. And I remember like being there and like all of a sudden his his uh, a car pulls up and then the guy's wife is right there and she's standing literally standing over her husband and like oh man I don't even I was like I felt terrible like I felt terrible like like you know what I mean like you don't even know what to do you know what I mean like you know it's just like you start praying, you start, you know, doing, doing everything you can. But at the end of the day, like you're just, you're just watching this thing unfold and it is crazy. And, uh, yeah, in that moment, you know, the, all of that went down and they ended up taking him away and then she left and then, you know, the whole thing left and we, we just like witnessed this whole crazy scenario and like, like it changed me. Like it, like you guys know my past. Like I've been through crazy things and I've seen, I've seen crazy things. I've seen death before, you know, and like, man, that's, that's kind of like my faith is so cr crazy today because like, man, it's, it's deep, it's deep. But looking back, I, you know, I try to think like what happened, right? I think the guy actually like, cause he was parked in the front. I think he probably reversed like, and he was going to speed out and then he probably stayed in reverse and when it went to speed out and go out he probably backed in and hit the wall and hit the machine because I don't think like he was trying to do that and in that moment of hitting the machine and all that probably had a heart attack and stuff you know and crazy crazy like you know the only thing I, I can say right now you know is like we life is precious people are precious our family our kids our loved ones our co-workers 
all of it. You you got one life. So many people they they look at they look at like certain situations, you know, and and they take things for granted. And and only once things go downhill and only once turmoil happens or somebody leaves or something, they say like, you know, I didn't know. If I would have known, I would have changed. But in that moment, I realized that, you know what? Time is not unlimited. And like right now, like I need to do what I need to do. I need to work hard. I need to like put the hours in. I need to excel at my trade so I can take care of my kids so I can give them an opportunity. I had no idea that one day at that time, I was, it wasn't even a thought that I would ever own a machine shop. That day kicked me in the, you know what, so hard. And, and I felt so horrible for so long. And it really made me think about life. And, and, and it was a pivotal time where I actually made a change. And, and I truly started just, just focusing and making sure that uh, I just was stepping up to everything that I was capable of doing and going beyond and working hard for Kevin, you know, just being the best family man I can, you know, taking care of my kids, doing doing all of that and just striving and stuff. So my my word to this story is for all of you guys, like men and women, everybody out there, like let's look at life now before things happen. Let's look at our spouses, our kids, our lives, our work, our opportunities, and let's be the best that we can be. Let's live up to the highest level of all that we were created for. Let's be the best Titan, the best John, the best Dave, the best Matt, the best everyone. Like, like let's go after our full potential and, and let's dedicate ourselves to touching our families' lives, touching every single life we come in contact with and, and, and helping them rise. And then we will rise. And that is the meaning of our lives right there. Man, this, <laughs> this was a tough one. I, I wanted to do this justice, but I just wanted to tell that story. But I wanted to just at the end of the day, I just wanted to say life is precious. Let's not wait for somebody to leave us. Let's not wait for turmoil to happen or for our kids to say that you know, we never played with them. We didn't do these different things. You know, Let's get off our cell phones. Let's get off like all the garbage and dedicate ourselves to our families. We have one life. We have one opportunity to actually do something. So let's get up and do it. I love you guys. I love this trade. A little bit of a different spin on a machining story. But hopefully you guys got the message. I love you guys. Boom.